Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Faith Family Church of God Sunday night service here on Facebook Live. We're so glad that you joined us tonight, and just as always, such an awesome presence and spirit of God in the service this morning, awesome worship service, an awesome word, on time word that God had for his people this morning about being thankful and uh, in this time of year, but not just this time of year, but all year round, um, kind of have a part two to that tonight. But before we go into the word, let's go and have a word of prayer. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, God. We thank you, God, and we do give you thanks and praise, God, for all that you have done for us. God, where you've brought us from, God, and then where you're bringing us to, God, because you have that perfect plan for us, God. You know where we need to be, Lord, in our walk and our relationship with you, God, and then where we need to be, you know, within ourselves, Lord God. So we know that you're, work, you're working with us. We are a work in progress. We thank you, God, that you never give up on us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful service this morning, God, just how you moved, Lord God, and for the word that you had for us this morning. Lord, and we thank you, Lord, that each and every request, God, that's, uh, of anybody that's on here tonight, Lord God, we, we thank you, Lord, knowing and believing together that it's going to be met according to your will and for your glory, Lord Jesus. And we ask right now that you would just anoint me as your speaker, Lord God, to bring the word that you have for your people tonight, Lord God, and open our hearts, minds, souls, God, to receive your word, Lord God, that it would grow in us, God, and grow us stronger and closer to you, Lord God. And we ask it all in Jesus' holy and mighty and precious name. Amen. All right, so like I said, it's a part two to Thanksgiving sermon uh, from this morning. Uh, it's titled, Being Thankful. So let's have a little bit of a history lesson, okay? So in September of 1620, a ship called the Mayflower left Plymouth, England, carrying 102 passengers, all seeking to flee from England's tight fist and find religious freedom to worship the one true God. After 66 days of riding the seas, making it somewhere around November, they dropped anchor near the tip of Cape Cod. And after being there for a month, they crossed the Massachusetts Bay, where they began working to establish a village they called Plymouth. Their first winter in their new environment was brutal, and most of the colonists remained on the ship, trying to keep from the harsh environments that they were not accustomed to. And because of them staying on that ship, in that tight, closed space, half of the pilgrims suffered from scurvy and other contagious diseases, leaving them to die. So in March of that upcoming year, the rest of the settlers moved ashore, where an Abenaki Indian greeted them in English. And several days later, this Indian returned with another Native American named Squanto. Squanto saw the poor conditions of the pilgrims who had been running low on food, and they'd been suffering from sickness, and he taught them how to plant and raise corn, how to extract sap from maple trees, how to catch fish in the rivers, and how to tell poisonous plants from the healthy plants. He also helped the pilgrims form an alliance with the Wampanoag tribe in that region. So in November of 1621, a year after they had come to this new world, after the pilgrims' first successful corn harvest, Governor William Bradford organized the first Thanksgiving feast and invited the Wampanoag Indians and their chief. And this festival of Thanksgiving, as we've come to know it, lasted for three days, all in celebration with thankfulness to God for new friendships and for bringing them through hard times. For many people today, though, Thanksgiving is about this time of year in November where we gather together with friends and loved ones for a couple of days eat turkey with all the trimmings and the side dishes on Thanksgiving Day. After our Thanksgiving meal, we fall asleep on the couch watching a movie together as a family, and then we wake up and go Black Friday shopping. That is the tradition of most families these days. But they have lost sight of the truth about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is truly about giving thanks to God for the great things he has done. But while we are thankful for the great things that he has done for us, we must also remember the many hardships that we've been through. Because it has been in those times that God has shaped us and molded us into the young men and women of God that we are today. And God has been with us through all of our hardships every step of the way, whether we realize it or not. 
And in spite of losing half of their people, see, the pilgrims gave thanks for safe travels, for new life, new beginnings, new friends, and for learning how to cultivate foods to help them to thrive. Instead of looking what they went through, instead of looking at their circumstances and all the negative things that happened, they counted their blessings. And that's what we need to be doing today. Habakkuk was a prophet who vowed to be thankful even in hard times. He was one who loved God enough to thank him in the times of distress. And we ought to love God like that because 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And see, James chapter 1 and verse 2 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Well, people may read those or hear those scriptures and say, Well, how can I be thankful when things are difficult? You know, I find it hard to do, they, they may say. Well, let's look at a couple of situations in which we can be thankful, even in the hard times. So when the provision of God changes, be thankful that He is unchanging. Okay? Habakkuk 3.17 says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Several things going on here. Habakkuk has this vision. He, 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 they're losing things vital to their economy, all vital to their survival. The fig tree won't blossom. It won't give fruit. There's no fruit on the vines. Olive trees aren't producing their olives, and fields won't give harvest. Cattle and sheep are lost. So all of these things, see, they were crucial to the economy back then because of produce and you know, produce is part of your food and you know people are going to pay for food and you know they're, they're, they need the food and then your animals and livestock that's where you get your dairy your milk cheese and the and your meat from so all of these things very crucial to their economy and very crucial to even their lives you know as they live and eat and drink um, but even though Habakkuk had this vision that that they were going to go without, he said that they would be thankful anyway. Habakkuk 3.18, in uh, the first part of 18, says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Well, why would he be thanking God, even when it seems like all hope was lost, and that the people of God, including himself, could suffer from the lack of resources? Because he knew that God would provide. As it says in Psalms uh, 23, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The key word is shall not. That's provision. See, when, when God, when we serve God and we are his children, we don't lack for anything. Our God is more than enough. He supplies all our needs. It's like that song. It says, my God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Chira. He is my God. See, He is God. God of all. All the universe, everything created. So if He is God of all and we serve God, He is our Father, we are His children, we don't have to worry. Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And Psalm 84 and 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Okay, and Matthew 21, 22 says, Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Even though things may seem grim in your life or in your family for a time, when it seems like nothing is going right, be thankful to God and have faith because He will provide and God is faithful. And a matter of fact, it could be much worse right now. So be thankful and know that God is your provider. And see, economic conditions change all the time. They changed in Egypt in the Bible times, seven years of famine but yet God provided and that he brought Joseph into the picture and he had Joseph store up 
for those years of famine. They changed, economic times changed for Job. He lost his wealth and his family, all because the devil took it from him. But God restored because of his faithfulness. There was change during the Great Depression in the early 1900s and the economic changes that COVID-19 has brought even in these times. The economy can change at any given moment. But we should not worry. Again, God always provides for his children. We are not people of this world's economy, okay? If we are saved, we pray every day, we trust that God will meet our needs, then we are a people who live in God's economy. And God's kingdom and economy has no end. God will provide. So be thankful no matter what you're facing because God will provide. And God does not change. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. And Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. He's the God of provision then, now, and forevermore. So be thankful. Another thing we can be thankful for um, is when going through our times of suffering, we can be thankful for his salvation. Habakkuk 3.18, the second half of it says, I will joy in the God of my salvation. We will encounter problems in this life because the devil seeks to destroy us. And everything about us is fragile and life is uncertain at times. But one thing we can be certain about, salvation provides eternal life. And really, we can be thankful that salvation is really very simple. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We can be thankful that Jesus took our place on the cross. Yes, we, we were supposed to be on that cross. You know, our sins, we have every right, really, to have been hung on that cross because of our sins, but God... Jesus took our place on the cross. He gave his own body and blood for us because if anyone truly deserved to die, it was us because of our sins. But Jesus loved you, and he loved you so much that he gave his own life in place of yours so that you can live and know of his great love for you. We can be thankful that John 5 and 24 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me, has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death to life. And Romans 10, 13 says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 1 John 5, 11 through 13 says, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So if we believe in God, if we truly believe that Jesus came down on this earth and gave up his own life, his own body, sacrificing himself for us in place of our sins, which should have nailed us to the cross, if we believe that truly and we call on the name of God and say, God, I'm so sorry for all that I've done and I, I need to change, help me to change. I, I accept your sacrifice. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, Lord, when it should have truly been me. Lord, please help me to change. I ask you into my heart to forgive me. When we are sincere like that, we can be thankful because we have the promise of everlasting life. We are not limited to this life here on earth. One way or another, our soul is going to pass from this earth into the hereafter, and it's going to go one of two places, either heaven or hell, and it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, because all would go to heaven that way. We are not limited to this life. Heaven is waiting for those of us who follow Jesus and have truly accepted him as Lord and Savior of our lives. John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. 
So Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know that way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to heaven. I don't care what anybody else says. Jesus is the only way. No other gods, no other false gods, no other false religions other than Christianity and the belief in the one true God, our Abba Father, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of God who gave his life up for us. But for those of us who believe that and we act on that and we follow after God and we are saved by his grace, heaven is waiting for us and the best is yet to come. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you. So it's saying here, according to God's abundant mercy, he has rebirthed us because we were born into this world into sin and we were doomed to an eternity in hell because of our sin. But because of his abundant mercy, because we accept Jesus' sacrifice, and he has rebirthed us into this new hope, this new life, through the resurrection, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we have an inheritance that is truly out of this world. We have a place in heaven waiting for us. So, in times of uncertainty, in times of just when you can't think of anything else to be thankful for, are you thankful for your living Savior? Are you thankful for salvation, for his unfailing, unconditional love? And are you thankful for the promise of eternal life as a follower of Jesus? You know what else we can be thankful for? We can be thankful for each other. Paul once told the Philippians in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Paul had a great love for his fellow brothers and sisters of the faith. Romans chapter 1 and 8 and 9 says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Everywhere Paul went, in Philippi, in Rome, everywhere he went, he loved his fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. This is how it should be. Yes, we each have differing opinions about different facets of life. We each have different ways that we act, different ways that we believe in certain things. But that is because no one person is made the same. If we were all made the same, life would be pretty boring. You know, but we are all unique in some way. We may not always see eye to eye about some things, but we should love each other and be thankful for one another. Jesus said in John 13, 35, By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. See, it's like this. My soul just lights up every time I get to see the faces of my church family every Sunday morning. And even now on Tuesday nights after our youth lessons, we have our youth Zooms. Um, and even when I go to uh, see my fellow minister friends from all over the state, when we have prayer meetings, camp meetings, things, things like that, because I love each and every one of you, and I'm very thankful for you. Sometimes, you know, we may differ on opinions um, because we are human. We have, you know, we have a right to our own opinions about things, but we love each other. Love gets through all. Love conquers all, and love covers everything. So are you thankful for your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ today? Are you thankful for your church and for your church family? In times of trouble when you can't think of much else to be thankful for, be thankful for each other and hold each other close. We can be thankful that when passing through trials, we can triumph in Christ. After all, Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, again, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Some people can say, well, why should we be thankful for our hard times and when we're going through trials or temptations, it seems like nothing's going right. Nothing's going right. 
because Habakkuk stated in Habakkuk 3 and 19, the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills. Let's break this down. The Lord is my strength. Okay, let's answer this with scripture. Psalm 27 and 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Our strength is in God because of his salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Why should we, why should we be afraid of the terrors of this world, of the threats that people make in this world, of the economic conditions when we serve a God who conquers it all, who made it all? All he has to do is just barely speak a word and everything changes. So God is our strength. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But those who wait on the Lord, those who follow after him, in other words, and wait patiently for him to answer, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Because God is our strength. God is our portion. God is our energy. You know, it's like we've said before, um, an instance where I did a couple of lessons back about a light bulb. You plug it into the you don't you, you plug it into the socket and it has power, but you take it out and it's it does not have power. It's not lit up. It has to stay connected to the energy source. We must stay connected to God. He is our energy source. When we stay connected to God, we won't grow weary. You know, our bodies may grow tired, but when we stay connected to God in prayer and in the word, our spirits won't grow tired because he is our strength, our portion, our shield, everything that we need. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He strengthens you. If you were in Christ, if you have accepted him as the Lord and Savior of your life, all you have to do is say, God, I can't do this myself. I need you to be my strength. I need you to be my eyes, my ears, my everything. Get me through this, God, because I can't do it without you. And once we hand it over to God, we don't have to worry about things anymore. He is our strength. Okay, the next part of that verse says, He will make my feet like deer's feet. In other words, swift and graceful. For he is always with us. Psalm chapter 91, verses 7 through 16 says, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, in other words, to protect you. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in times of trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So there we go again. Because we serve God and we, we worship him and we follow after him. And because we are Christians, Christ-like, we seek to be like him every day and seek his will for our lives that it says that even though everything in the world is going wrong and there's tons of evil happening, people are getting sick left and right, and, you know, all these things are happening in the world, it shall not come near us. You know, we can look and see it all around us, but because we trust in God, because He is our shield, our portion, our strong tower, our deliverer, and our strength, everything that we need, He will keep you safe, even when everything else is going wrong all around you. He will keep you safe. And even sometimes when it seems like things are going wrong in your life, just think about this. God has his hand over you, protecting you. Okay, like if this is um, everything in the world coming down and raining, trying to rain on top of you, then God has his hand 
un, over you, you know, uh, and he's keeping everything from falling on you. Yes, some things may come and may attack you, but just imagine it like this. It could be so much worse if God does not have his hand on you. But because he loves you and because you love him and you serve him and we call him father, he calls us children, he keeps us safe from the world and from the things that are happening in this world, regardless. He will make me to walk on my high heels. In other words, higher ground. No, it's not shoes. It's high heels, higher ground. No matter where you go, as long as you have Jesus, even the valley that you were in is higher ground. Because without Jesus, we have nothing. You know, and without Jesus, we can be lower than we even are now. But thank God, we can be thankful that he is always up to the occasion. Jeremiah 32, 37 says, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in my anger, in my fury, and in great wrath. I will bring them back to this place and I will cause them to dwell safely. It doesn't matter what situation you find yourselves in, even if we cause it ourselves, because sometimes that does happen. God will always be with you, and he will always help you with whatever you need every step of the way. All you have to do is just reach out and say, God, I need you. I need you. And guess what? He's going to come grab your hand. He's going to pull you out, and he's going to lead you to safety. Numbers 23 and 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Every promise that God has spoken in his word, in the Bible, God is good for it. God does not lie. He does not lie. He does not lie. If he says it in his word, you can believe it because it is so, and if he said it, it will happen and he will honor it. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3, But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Psalm 34, 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. And we can be thankful that God is always with us, even in our toughest and darkest times in life, because he never leaves us, and he never forsakes us. Has anyone noticed that each passage of Scripture we've talked about tonight contains something that we can be thankful for? So when you can't think of much to be thankful for, you know, we all get down, we all get depressed sometimes, you know, because of the weight of the situations going on in our lives or in our families. You know, and sometimes we can't see the light of God in some situations because of the darkness. But in those times when we can't really think of things to be thankful for, just go back to these scriptures. Come back to this video. Be reminded of everything that we can be thankful for. So in closing... From this lesson comes a great example of the power of true religion that is found in the Bible. What the lesson is speaking of is the state of a kingdom-minded person whose mind is weaned or not reliant on earthly enjoyments, but instead has learned that the highest realization of their desires is found only in God. You know that 30 Days of Thankfulness challenge is happening on Facebook? As a matter of fact, it happens every year during the month of November. Each day you post something you're thankful for in honor of Thanksgiving from November 1st to November the 30th. Well, the truth is, if we sit down and count our blessings one by one, there will be too many to crown all into one month. So, Instead of just being thankful during the month of November or even just around the week of Thanksgiving, let's resolve to be thankful every day, 365 days of the year, and become more and more kingdom-minded every day, not focusing on the things of this world or what we don't have in this world or the, the situations or the evil of this world, but being kingdom-minded, focused on God, and doing his work because whether we realize it or not 
We truly, truly have so much to be thankful for each and every day of the year. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, God, for this time together, Lord, in fellowship of your word. Thank you for the word that was delivered tonight, God, and we just thank you for the reminder, God, that, you know, that Thanksgiving is great and all, and that it's great to be thankful during this time, Lord, and that we call Thanksgiving, Lord, but thank you for the reminder that we must be thankful every day, all year round, for the blessings that you give us just by us waking up in the morning, having breath, having the ability to walk, having the having a roof over our head, as we sung about this morning, shoes on our feet. Lord, everything that we take for granted so much every day, we should be thankful for it because you have allowed it, you have blessed us with it, God. That even in our toughest times, in our darkest times, when we can't see what's going on or we sometimes wonder where you are, we can always find you in those times, God, because if we just stand back, and we just take a moment to say, well, let me just count my blessings. I woke up this morning. I'm still breathing. I had a car to get to work today, or I had a way to get to school. I have a house that I can come home to. I have a family I can come home to. I have food in my refrigerator and on my table. I have a bed I can lay down in. I have clothes on my body. I have anything that I could need. We can just sit down and we count our blessings one by one, and we can always always find you, God, in your spirit when we come into that state of thankfulness, when we count our blessings. Because truly, we are a blessed people, and we thank you, God, for all that you've done for us and for what you're doing currently for us. Even though we may not see things in the making right now, just we thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives, in the lives of our family, in the lives of our churches and in the life of this nation, God. Because we know that you are truly Lord of all and you have the final say, Lord, over everything. And we trust you and we believe in you, God, having faith, knowing that you will work things out according to your will and for your glory, for the good of those who love you, God. We thank you and we give you thanks and praise, God, not only during this season, but every day of the year. And it's in Jesus' name we thank you, give you glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Love you guys. Um, real quick, as Sister Brenda has announced this morning, we will have, we will have our Monday night prayer service tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. So any needs, prayer requests, or praise reports, please feel free to comment on um, our church page tomorrow. Message me, Pastor, Sister Brenda. Um, or, you know, just get those needs into us so that we can gather them together and gather together over Facebook tomorrow night at 6 o'clock for our Monday night prayer meeting. And also remember that Tuesday night youth service and Wednesday night Bible study are canceled for this week because of the Thanksgiving holiday. Everybody is, uh, different people are going um, out of state or out of town to uh, be with family and friends for the Thanksgiving season. So we want everybody to be able to enjoy that time together. Um, but please be, of course, reassured that um, everything will start back up the coming Sunday, next week. But remember, we will have prayer service tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. So looking forward to seeing you all online here tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. Love you guys. Be blessed. Have an awesome week. And happy Thanksgiving.